mindful life practice. Okay, so knees into the chest, palms interlace behind the head. You're gonna lengthen through the left leg, bring your left elbow to top your right knee and just stay here for five, for four, for three, and for two. And then for one, crisscross the opposite way, top for five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Let's keep going, cross and top, five, four, three, two, one, cross and top, five, four, three, and two, and one. Let's just take two more. Four, three, two, and one. Last one, five, four, three, two, and then on one, take both knees into the chest. Now this time, open your knees wide, and you're gonna take your palms to the inside of your thighs, and I just want you to imagine you're coming into a curl pose. So you're, you would curl on your back, so your toes are pointing, hands are lifting up. You guys all know what curl is by now because um, you've seen my Instagram stories. <laughs> Some of you have even done the challenge. So it's like you're just doing curl on your back body and pushing the ground away. Stay for one more breath. And then let's take our knees back into our chest, hands on the backs of the thighs, and then do a nice rock over the spine and all the way back into a table. From your table, inhale your left palm up towards the sky, big stretch, and then let's thread the left arm under, finding yourself in this nice, sweet little shoulder stretch, and either keep your palm where it is or lift it all the way up and twist. And then slowly unwind, and let's breathe into our twist the opposite way, okay? So right palm lifts all the way up towards the sky. Thread your right arm under, land onto the shoulder, land onto the cheek and take deep breaths. Come all the way back up. Um, turn your palms, we're just gonna turn them towards the side. So if you can see, I'm doing like this. And then turn them the other way if you can. And if that's too deep, then just rotate your palms back to the side. Okay, and we're just gonna do some little rocks forward and back, coming into the wrist crease. So vinyasa yoga, the practice we're gonna do tonight, it's pretty, um, it's like an intermediate level. I wanna encourage you to move at a pace that feels good for your body. Um, we all have different, experience of yoga. Um, I don't know what your level's at. I'm not in the room with you. So please just be really mindful of like doing what feels good, okay? Going at a level that works for you. Let's unwind the arms coming back to your table. And now we're gonna tuck the toes under and lift the knees. I don't know if you can see, my knees are hovering, but I'm like in this floating table. And you're pushing the ground away and you're spreading through the shoulders. Stay and hold here for five, for four, for three, for two, and then one, shift your hips back. So your hips are almost stacking above the heels. You're still low. And then you're gonna lengthen your spine all the way up and find your first downward facing dog, your Adho Mukha Shavasana. So in this pose, you are spreading the fingers and spreading through the palms and like supporting yourself by suctioning through the hands and your spine is lengthening straight up hips are lifting up and then maybe bend one knee and then the next just working your way into the shape maybe rock your head side to side Come all the way back into a neutral. Bend through both of your knees, take your gaze forward and just step the feet up to meet the hands, finding your forward fold. Take your inhale to halfway lift, so you lengthen through the spine, you reach through the crown of the head, exhale into a fold, and then bend through the knees, sit the hips back, lift into your utkatasa in your chair. For a second, just play with the elements here. So be really strong and intense in your chair and then very, really soft and simple. 
and then see if you can find the exact middle between these two polarities, effort and ease, and give it one more breath. And then as you reach up to stand, let go of the effort, receive ease, keep your palms into heart center, let go of movement, receive stillness, take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and then inhale both palms up towards the sky. This is your upward mountain. Exhale into a fold. Breathe your halfway lift, lengthen, reach through the crown of the head. And then exhale your way back down, plant the palms, step your way back to a plank. And we're going to flow through our first vinyasa. And let's do the first one with the knees landed, just to be safe with the spine. So triceps draw back, you lower the belly down. Inhale your heart up, exhale to lower, and then shift through a table, find your down dog. So that is like your level one vinyasa. I'm gonna recommend if you're newer to yoga um, that you stick with a level just like that, okay? Bend through the knees, gaze forward, hop or step feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, bend through the knees and sit back. And even if you're not new to yoga, even if you just feel like taking it easy today, then you can stay that way as well. You can also skip a vinyasa. You can always go straight back to child's pose. Okay, let's inhale, lift all the way up. And then exhale our palms into heart center. One more time, adding on, breathe in, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. And then exhale, lower, plant the palms, step your way back, float through your vinyasa, maybe your knees are lifted this time. Come all the way back to your down dog. Take your right foot up towards the sky, three-legged dog. And then land the right foot on the mat. Take your left leg up, so we're stretching through the calves. And then land that foot back down. Bend through the knees, gaze forward, hop for step, feet up to meet the hands. Inhale, half lift. You got it. Exhale, fold. Bend through the knees, sit down, lift your palms up. Take your palms into your heart center. I'm going to turn so you can see me. Inhale, lift at your elbows. And then exhale, twist, land your right elbow on your left thigh. So you're gazing over the left shoulder. There's this tendency for the right knee to come forward, draw it back. Sit a little lower, give it three, give it two, give it one, and then come through center, and then twist the opposite way. Give it three, two, and then one, unwind, and then forward fold. Inhale, breath in, exhale, exhale breath out. Step back, flow through your vinyasa, come to your down dog, and this time we will add on. So take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog, bend through the right knee, stack the hips, open up, slowly unwind back to your three-legged dog, draw your right knee in, step your right foot between the palms. We're gonna come all the way up into a crescent lunge, and now you can stay in your crescent lunge. I'm gonna tilt my computer a little bit higher so you can see my head. There, that should be good. Okay, so <laughs> either you just keep your arms up overhead like this, or you might open them and then weave the right arm underneath the left, coming into some eagle arms, so it's a shoulder stretch. If you can't get this weave together, you can always just grip opposite shoulders, okay? But maybe you're weaving the forearms and connecting. And let's hold on to this bind for one deep inhale. One deep exhale, and then let go and unwind and take your big stretch. And then exhale to forward fold, land the palms, step your right foot back, keep your right foot floating now. Let's see if you can do a vinyasa with your right foot lifted. So you lower, you roll over the left toes, maybe you land your right foot, and then come all the way back to your down dog. And if you can't do it with one foot lifted, then just lower both feet. It really doesn't matter. Take your left leg up towards the sky. Bend through your left knee, stack the hips. 
And then unwind back to your three-legged dog. Draw your left knee in. Step your left foot between the palms. Come all the way up to this crescent lunge on the opposite side. And then we'll take the opposite. So you're going to open your arms. You're going to weave the left arm underneath the right. Find your eagle arm. Stretch on this side. Three deep breaths. And then unwind, lift both palms, inhale, and then exhale, fold. Step back, maybe your left toes are lifted. Follow through with your vinyasa. Find your way up to your down dog. Take one full breath. Bend through the knees, hop or step forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, bend through the knees, sit back, find your chair. Okay, we're gonna take one more warm up flow. We'll move a little faster. So palms are lifted, inhale. Exhale, your palms at heart center, inhale, lift. Exhale, twist, right elbow, left knee. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, twist the opposite way. Inhale all the way, and then exhale, fold. Breathe your halfway lift. Oh no, I hear the cat waking up. Exhale, fold. Step back, move through your vinyasa. Come all the way back to your down dog. And in your down dog, you're gonna take your right leg up towards the side, three legged dog, bend through the knee and stack the hips again. Now maybe you stay here, this is option one. Option two is that you ripple forward into your plank and then you flip your dog coming onto your right tippy toes, outer edge of the left foot, and you reach your right arm towards the sky. So this is a back bend. This is a lateral side body stretch. It's also an arm balance. Come all the way back into neutral. Take your right knee, step your right foot between the palms. Now this time let's inhale up into your crescent lunge. Let's exhale, open into your warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, come all the way forward. Plant your palms down. You're going to anchor through your left palm. Take your right palm up towards the sky. So you're twisting now towards the right thigh. Roll onto the outer edge of the left foot. Wiggle your right foot back, back, back. So now you're in a side plank, Vashistasan. If you wanna keep your foot here, go ahead. If you wanna step your foot, maybe you float it up towards the sky. Hold where you are for five, for four, for three, for two, and then for one, maybe you take that one-footed vinyasa. Oh, maybe not. Maybe you just come back to child pose. You know your body. Take a deep breath. And opposite side, left leg lifts. Bend through your left knee, stack the hips, either stay or come forward, flipping your heart towards the sky, lengthening and extending, breathing in and then breathing out. Come all the way back, take a big step forward with your left foot. Inhale up to the crescent lunge. Exhale, open to the warrior two. Breathe in, reverse the warrior. And then exhale, come all the way back. Windmill palms to the mat and frame the foot. So either you step straight back to your plank or you come on the Vashistasana option, the side plank, rolling over, walking your foot back. Maybe you float the foot, give it five, give it four, three, two, and then one, make your way back to your down dog. And then from our down dog, let's just bend through the knees, sit the hips back, and give yourself a breath in your child's pose. If you need a little sip of water, go ahead. I need to come get my glass of water. I think we're safe right now. The cat seems like she's fallen asleep again. Perfect. 
So from your um, child's pose, I want you to imagine that there is like this little marble on the floor in front of your nose. And you're gonna slide, slide, slide that marble all the way forward until you bring your body onto your navel. And then take your palms out in front of you. Okay, so we're gonna do a, um, a locust back bend with your arms extended. So with your pelvis heavy, your belly light, you're gonna lift your heart up. Keep your gaze low. So you're lifting your legs, you're lifting your feet. Navel is engaged, supporting you here. Hold on for five, for four, three, two, and then one to lower, and then just land a cheek. So we're gonna move into a couple of deeper back bends. Um, if you want to go back to that superhero, go ahead. Um, the second option you're going to do, you're going to come up onto your elbows as if you're going into Sphinx, okay? And then you're going to bend your left heel and kick your left heel towards your bottom and see if you can reach the opposite hand back, the right hand. And this is like a half bow pose, okay? So it's your left foot, your right hand is on the left foot, your left elbow is supporting you. So this should be like a bit of a back bend, a bit of a quad stretch. Please listen to what your back is telling you. And if it's telling you that this is no good, then listen. Yoga is supposed to relieve stress from our body, not add stress to the body, right? Take one more breath. And then just release. And then let's take the opposite side. So kicking your right heel now. Left palm reaches back, and then maybe you find this expression on this side. Stay for three, and stay for two, and then for one. Lower, and then land the elbow. Press the palms underneath the shoulders. Shift up through a tabletop, and then we're going to come all the way back to the down dog. So if you're I think most of you guys have taken class with me before. Um, option one is on the knees, just doing core work like, yeah. <laughs> um, option two, up in your down dog. You're gonna take your right leg up towards the sky, three legged dog. The first thing we're gonna do is bend the knees, stack the hips, either stay or flip your dog again, heart opening. And then unwind back to your three legged dog. Take the right knee in, you're gonna rock all the way forward into plank and then right knee is gonna tap the right elbow and then we're gonna take it across to tap the left, okay? Four times, so two, right and then left, three, right and then left, and then four, right and then left. And then after this, I want you to extend your right leg long, land onto the outer edge of the right foot, land the left heel, lift all the way up. If you're like, what on earth is happening? Don't worry about it if it's your first vinyasa. It will come with time, just have patience. <laughs> take it easy, land the left foot, sorry, land the left palm, take the right knee into the chest again, and then take a big step forward with the right foot. Step your left foot in so it's like at a 45 degree angle. Right knee is stacking above right ankle, and then inhale, your palms up towards the sky. So you're back in this um, warrior one with your legs. We're gonna take our arms, we're gonna open them wide, and we're gonna come back into the eagle arms that we did before. So right arm goes underneath the left. Maybe you grip the opposite shoulders, maybe you leave the forearms together. And now we're gonna play around with shifting our weight off of the left foot and tilting forward, making this uppercase T with these eagle arms. So it's like a fusion of warrior three and eagle arms, okay? If the eagle arms are throwing you off balance, then just let go of them. Hold on to your table, hold on to whatever you need to to find your balance. And know that it's okay if you fall, you're still a good person. Bend through the right knee, come all the way up, lift your left knee. Even I'm feeling off balance. <laughs> and then we're gonna take our full eagle. So you're gonna cross your left knee, Sit your hips back. You're still on your right foot. Maybe your left toes can hook around your ankle. Sit a little lower. Give it five. Give it four. Give it three, two. 
And then on one, inhale, lift everything up. Keep your left knee lifted. We're doing a lot of balance right now, aren't we? <laughs> Either you're right here, or you extend your left leg out. Now notice we have this tendency to want to lean back when we do this. Take your heart forward, stay lingering here, lifting your foot even higher. Take one more deep breath. And then we're gonna bend and step all the way back and find our way into a warrior two. I'm just gonna turn so I'm facing you. You guys don't need to turn. Okay, warrior two. Press through your right big toe. Press through the outer edge of the left foot. And then just connect to the breath. Settle into stillness. If you wanna stay still, you can. Or if you wanna take a few flows, we're gonna inhale, reverse. And then we're gonna exhale up to the warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Maybe this time you exhale all the way up to your extended side angle. And then last one, inhale, reverse. This time you land in your extended side angle. Right elbow is on the right thigh. Left fingertips are reaching up in front of you. If you want to reach the right fingertips towards the mat, go for it. Maybe you wrap around into the bind if that's part of your practice. Maybe not. It's all just, they're all just poses. It really doesn't matter or make a difference. Take one more breath. And then slowly unwind, come all the way up. You're doing awesome. Inhale. And then exhale, both palms to the mat and frame the foot. You got it. Step your right foot all the way back. Flow through your vinyasa. Take deep breaths. Your deep breaths tap into the parasympathetic nervous system. They calm you down. They remind you that it's okay. Everything's okay. And then if you want to join, we'll flow through the opposite side. So left leg lifts up. First thing we do is bend through the knee, stack the hips, reach forward, 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 roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Take the left arm behind you, open up into your flipped dog, and then slowly unwind. Come forward, let's do our cross taps. One, two, this is a lot of core work, three, four, and then maybe you stay here, maybe you extend the leg, land the heel, find yourself in that triangle. I keep calling this fallen triangle. I'm not sure if that's the right name for this pose. So you're gonna have to Google that. Lower back down, and then take a big step with your left foot. Okay, let's slowly lift all the way up. Find yourself in your warrior one, so land onto your right heel, making a 45 degree angle. And then open your arms wide, and this time I believe it's your right arm underneath Left arm underneath the right. Left arm underneath the right, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you are doing it and it feels like you've already done this side, then just switch your arms. Okay, let's get ready to balance. So move slowly. Slowly tear your way up. Key principles in balance. We need to have a strong foundation. We need to move slowly and mindfully. And we need to have a drishti point or like a focal point that we gaze at and that's gonna help you stay steady. Take one more breath. Tilt all the way up to stand. Cross your right knee on top of your left. Sit a little lower, finding yourself in your Garudasana, your eagle pose. And as you're all wound up in this bind, you might be uncomfortable. Just remind yourself we're not going to be in eagle pose forever. This pose shall pass. Just like this quarantine shall pass. Take one more breath and then unwind. Reach up. Lift your right leg up. And then maybe you extend out behind you. Careful if you're leaning back to draw your heart forward. Take a deep inhale. Take a deep exhale. And then tilt all the way back. I'm going to have to move again. I really faced the wrong way, didn't I? <laughs> Bend through your left knee. 
step all the way back and then just rest into your warrior two. Stay in stillness for a few breaths. Just feel what's going on in, in your body and in your mind. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. And then one more, inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. And then maybe you reach the left arm all the way down, maybe wrapping around, interlacing the palms, gazing over the right shoulder, finding this bind. Be aware that everyone's body is different. Some people have long arms, like me, <laughs> abnormally long arms, and so binds are a bit easier. It's just like some kids in my class are better at reading, some are better at math, right? So try not to judge your abilities too much on what other people can do. Let's slowly unwind back, lifting all the way back up. You got it. I think that was the last pose on this side. The trouble is I can't hear you guys, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's inhale, reverse the warrior. I think that was it. Exhale all the way, windmill all the way back. And then step back and move up to your down dog. Yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> If you notice that I missed something, feel free to do it. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then come all the way forward into your plank. And what you're going to do in your plank is you're going to land onto your forearms. And we are going to play with coming up into dolphin, okay? So your forearms are on the mat. And you're going to walk your feet forward and your hips come up. So this is preparation for headstand. It's preparation for pinja, which I cannot do. Um, I'm not going to cue you guys through these inversions because I just feel like it's not safe with me not in the room to like spot and support you. So we're just going to build strength by staying here. And if that's something that you want to explore after your practice, go ahead. Just stay up in the dolphin for three and two. And then on one, wiggle your feet all the way back, back, back. Find yourself into your forearm plank again. Take a deep inhale. Take a deep exhale. We're going to take the palms back onto the mat and then land your knees onto the mat. Okay, yoga push-ups. Let's do eight of them. Elbows drawn back, pushing the ground away. This is tricep work. If you want to tuck your toes and lift your knees, you can. I do not want to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but basically, this is the way that your arms need to be moving back during your chaturangas. And I love doing yoga push-ups because we need to build our strength before we do a full chaturanga. Let's just take one more. And then come all the way back. And then shift back, sit back on your heels and rest into your child's pose. One inhale. And one exhale. And then roll all the way up just to sit on your heels, watching for one moment. So um, if you want to come back to your yoga push-ups, go ahead. Um, if you just want to come into like a little hip opening Buddha squat, just like this, go ahead. Um, I'm sure you've seen on my Instagram, I've been all about crow pose lately because I was tagged in this crow challenge and now I'm doing this like arm balance war thing. <laughs> with this Pilates teacher here in Abu Dhabi. Um, anyway, so I'm going to give us an opportunity to explore and crow if that's something that you're building and working on. You're going to land your palms onto the mat, lift your hips up, wiggle your feet in a little bit, bend your elbows back, and rest your knees on your triceps. Maybe this is just where you are and your feet are on the earth and you're just practicing lining up your body and you're just here. And that is a great place to be. And maybe you can lift one foot and you're there and that's a great place to be. And maybe you can take both feet up and gaze 
forward, don't gaze down. Our body goes where our eyes go, and if we fall, if we gaze down, we're gonna fall down, so gaze forward, floating on your core. And if you're just in child's pose, it's still yoga. One more breath, and then come back, you got it. <sighs> taking a deep inhale, and taking a deep exhale. So let's come onto the knees. Sit the hips back onto the heels. Take a deep breath. So we're gonna take a back bend now. Um, if you wanna just come into your bridge pose, um, that is an option if camel pose does not feel good. Um, I'm just gonna show you bridge quickly. Camel was a pose that I avoided for like many years when I was a beginner. So this is a great place to be if camel feels a bit too vulnerable, okay? In camel, you're up on the knees. Toes can be tucked if you like. You're gonna put your palms onto your back body like they're coming into jean pockets, okay? And then you're gonna lean your hips forward and lean your heart back. And maybe you just stay like this. Maybe your hands can reach all the way back. I am a big advocate of keeping your chin tucked. It's called Jalandhara Bandha. Um, I think that throwing your head back, it's just like a lot of weight for the cervical spine to handle. Um, there's no right or wrong. Different lineages of yoga say different things, but that's just what I say. Take one more breath. And then just support your hips to come all the way back up to seated, or sorry, back upright and sit the hips back down. Okay, so we have been working on um, balancing poses. We've been working on back bends. Um, we are gonna come up into a full dancer's pose and not our Jasana. So let's just come up into a down dog and then make your way to the front of the mat and just slowly roll up to stand. Um, so first of all, if the back bends are not like feeling great in your body right now, um, you can just come straight into tree pose, which is like this. This is another great balancing pose. Um, if you want to take the full dancers, we are going to root down through your right foot, kick your left heel back, take your left palm, grip the inside of the left foot, and then take your right arm up towards the sky. And then maybe start tilting your body forward. Know that you can hold on to something if you're losing your balance. If your balance feels off today, try not to judge yourself for that. Take one more breath. And then tilt all the way up to stand. And then we'll flow the opposite way. Okay, so left foot roots and anchors. Right heel kicks back. Right palm to the inside of the right foot. And then maybe you start tilting your way forward. Finding your standing balance. Three, two, and then one, coming all the way up, landing your right foot, connect your palms into your heart center, feel the juxtaposition between balancing on one foot and grounding on two feet. Feel those two polarities. Inhale, palms upwards towards the sky. Exhale, fold. If you want to take a vinyasa, go ahead. Coming all the way back to your down dog. And we're going to move into a deep pigeon stretch. Okay, so you're going to take your right leg up towards the sky. Big stretch, stretch, stretch. Draw your right knee in. Lay your right shin across the width of the mat. So right knee is behind right wrist, right ankle is behind left wrist, 
wiggle your left knee back in space. If this hurts your kneecap, you can come and do this pose on your back and you get the same benefit, okay? Either way, it's like a deep hip stretch. The hips are this part of the body where we carry a lot of our, our crap. All of the stuff that we're holding on to. And so as you lean into this shape, know that it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. No right or wrong. The Mindful Life Practice.